No. Pop machine's broke downstairs. Oh no. Devastating. All right. Um, obviously excited this week to, to come off a win. Proud of the guys for what they did. Um, excited to get ready to play Michigan, uh, play a Big Ten team at home. Excellent team, uh, number two team in the country for a reason. So great, great opportunity for us, experience for us. Um, uh, we'll have to see tomorrow uh, Heinrich and Jeff in terms of who can, pra- you know, how they practice. Obviously, Heinrich didn't finish the game. We don't, we don't think it's much, but I, you know, I, I reserve judgment until I see him, um, see where Jeff's at. So we have a full picture on that. Uh, and Luke Reimer, um, uh, you know, still question, would be questionable for the game as we sit here right now. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where he's at. Um, with that, I'll see what questions you guys have. Coach, how do you look at this mission game and kind of make the team look at it as a huge opportunity to do something really cool instead of more of a challenge going up against the number two team today? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to play every team we play. Um, no one came to the University of Nebraska to to not play good teams. Um, you know, we started off with you know a tough schedule. We played on the road the first game. We started off with a, you know, had some had some tough breaks in that game. You know, had, had a touchdown before the half. We thought maybe you know you never heard us complain about anything. We're not here to complain. We're not here to make excuses. We're here to play good football and win. We went to Colorado, top twenty-five team at the time. Um, probably still are. I don't. I haven't seen it. Um, you know, played them. We're, we're just going to play every week and battle. So. Um, uh, this this is a great opportunity. We we have good players. We expect our players to play well. Um, the game, you know, this game will be about blocking and tackling, and covering, getting open, making throws. So we'll just we'll just play it and uh, do that for every week for eight weeks and see what happens. You, you guys are number six in rush offense and number one in rush defense. What does that say about your team to this point? Well, it, it's a step in the right direction for the blueprint of what we want to do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a super super big stats guy in that. I think sometimes they can be misleading. You know. Um, but, you know, I, I do think, it belo- you know, for a team that was, I think, 108th last year in rush defense, and we, it's not like we played, you know, we played, we played a Big Ten team, we played a Pac-12 team, we played, we faced a team in Northern Illinois, you know, so we faced some good teams. Um, I think it's trending in the right direction. Um, you know, this is a team that's going to come in that's going to try to prove a point on the ground against you and run the ball at you, and so guys have to be up for the challenge. But just from a, you know, 50,000-foot view, what we're doing, the, the, the blueprint that we want to have is moving in that direction. So we'll just, we just have to keep accelerating it each week. How does it, uh, what does it say about your practices, especially those, uh, those Tuesday and Wednesday practices and their effectiveness in achieving what you want? Yeah, you know, I, I, I get a little animated on the sidelines sometimes. And we had a play late in the last game where one of our players overran. You know, it's all we talk about is tracking the near hip and our angles, overran a play. And I screamed at him like, all those spring practices and all those fall camp practices for that, like, you know, and again, it was, we had the game won and I'm kind of challenging the guys to have a little fun with them. Like, but I mean, we believe that everything that happens in the game happens in practice, um, good and bad. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to build this program by developing and that, that comes through practice by challenging our guys. Um, even something as silly as like, you know, we practice on Wednesday nights, the last two weeks down on the grass fields, we take a break, we go in the locker room, we come back upstairs. We go in the stadium. Um, we did that for multiple reasons. But even when we went out after the wet weather delay, it was like, hey, this is this is team compete, man. Like, let's treat it like uh, treat it like a Wednesday night. So, um, I think I think the I think what's ha- what we're asking the guys to do is working in some ways. We just have to stay with it, you know, until until it comes fully to fruition. The blueprint that Michigan has used to get to the playoff the last two years, physicality, all of that. How much is that? in line with the way that you want to build this? Everything. It's, it's, you know, I mean, you think about when Coach Harbaugh first came in, you know, it was taking over, you know, after I can't remember if it was one or two coaches, and I don't ever want to be, but, you know, a couple of years of not being a great program after being a great program, and he recruited. I mean, I remember working, I worked one of his camps when I was the head coach at, at the Temple. I, you guys probably don't remember, but he was the guy that started the satellite camps, right? And um, it was a big controversy at the time, right? He was the first person to go at 12:01 to someone's house and recruiting. So I did that. Then you know, I, I didn't like doing it, but I did it because he was doing it. So um, he's had a real impact on the game. But his his sometimes I'll have recruits say to me like, "Well, coach, are we going to be good?" And I'm, you know, what, 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 you know, what, should I go to Michigan? I'm like, "Well, he did it, <laughs> you know." So that's what we're doing. So um, yeah, so the, so his blueprint for building that program for the for the way that they play, a lot of those things are similar. You know, obviously we want to have. A little bit of an option element at times too, you know. So there's differences, but the overall arching 
blueprint for being great on the O and D lines, you know, having good quarterback play, being physical with tight end, all those things. That's 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 what we're doing. I know you were really proud of Anthony on the blitz pickup on the touchdown. How do you think overall he and Emmett Johnson did, you know, when the ball wasn't in their hands on, on Saturday? Yeah, I thought it was good, you know. Um you know, we just did the T V show, you know, I know we had three sacks, you know, you know um um a couple of those were just an RPO where it's not there. Like Heinrich's just got to hand the ball off or get outside the pocket and just throw it away. You know, as I said to him, like don't don't start being something you're not, man. Like don't start. Please don't be that guy. You know, Heinrich, just if the play is not there. Like have we, we as a team? I hope we've all learned. Like just don't make a bad play worse. So we took a sack late in the game in four minute on a play we never should take a sack on. So um, as I tell our team, forget about this who we're playing this week. Just just as I tell our team, you know, just because you win doesn't mean there's not the same. There's not the same issues that you had when you lost. And so um, to answer your question, I thought they did a good job. You know, I thought they did a good job. Uh, we missed one. We missed one blitz pickup. Um, and Heinrich had to get outside the pocket and throw it away. Um, it was a pretty exotic blitz package from Louisiana Tech. And um, uh, they'll be tested this week. This is, uh, you know, these guys on defense, uh, Coach Minter and all those guys, they, they, know. They're, they're, they know protections. So... Um, you know, we'll have to do some things, uh, you know, with, with the backs, with the quarterback in the run game, too, on third downs, maybe. But I thought our I thought our tailbacks did a good job. Hey, Coach, what kind of growth have you seen from Bryce Benhart just year over year from what you saw before and, and what you're seeing now? Um, I, you know, obviously, I can't talk about too much beyond. I just, you know, what I saw from uh, him last year, I thought, I thought I think he's playing well. I think he's uh, – uh, those guys are doing what's asked of them. I think when you add the option component in, that adds a lot to the offensive line. There's a lot of – understanding the box counts and who the read key is and the pitch key is and all those different things. Um, but I think Bryce is playing well, you know, and the, 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 they're certainly going to get tested this weekend with the edge players that Michigan has. Um, but, uh, you know, I think all those guys in the offensive line, they come in every day, they work, they battle, they get in the games, uh, they fight. Um, and, uh, again, because of kind of the way we play offense, um, you get to some games and it's a little different than what you expected, right? So. Um, they have to kind of adjust early in the game to see how people are playing us. Uh, and I think Bryce is one of those guys who does a great job at that. What goes into uh, having Tommy you know, play 18 snaps of receiver? How did that evolve? How did that situation evolve? Yeah, we just um, – we I, ju I just love Tommy Hill. I think he's explosive. I think he's dynamic. I think he's tough. I think he's smart. You know, he, he was about to take that kickoff return to the house. Now we got the holding call. He was about to take that kickoff return to the house. He fumbled it. He's the first guy who's like, hey, that's, you know, that, that's on me. That's a terrible coach, you know. So um, I just think when you have good players, you use them, right? So, he, you know, he was going to be a starting corner. He got hurt. He's kind of a rotational corner for us. Uh, he, just, he just works twice as hard. So he's helping us on offense. Initially, it was kind of as a big play threat. And then um, last week, we just started using him more. You know, hey, you're practicing on offense. You're practicing on defense. So um, – if uh, if if I have a good player, I'm gonna try to use him as much as possible. So he has the mind. A lot of guys couldn't do it. He has the mindset and the competitiveness and the intelligence to do it. Does he split his rep like 50, 50 during practice, or is he skewed one way more now? Uh, probably a little more on offense, depending on the period, right? You know, he's gonna go over in some of the passing periods on defense. So we're we're, we're uh, you know because I have a good staff, you know, I try to skew the periods where this is sort of more of a Tommy focus on offense, Tommy focus on defense. I have a young freshman who's redshirting. We're already starting to do it with him. Like, I mean, I just think when you have good players, you you try to utilize them. So, coach, going up against uh, you know the offensive line, going up against that run defense that you guys have, and number one right now. I mean, how much of a benefit is that preparing for what Michigan is going to throw at you guys in terms of you know blitzing and all that? Yeah, um, um, I, I believe that iron sharpens iron. I believe you get better at practice. I think going against each other has helped us. Um, you know, because we go against each other on, you know, even on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we compete against each other. Um, so I think that's really helped us. Um, you know, Michigan, uh, Michigan's as, as good a team up front in terms of their defensive line, in terms of getting off blocks. They're not trying to really fool you necessarily. I mean, they will pressure you. Um, but, you know, they, they are as good a team in terms of playing with their hands. And you think you have a window and they get off. And so you have to be, you have to be content with two and three and four yard runs, right? And you have to get your backs to run uh, hard. And, you know, you know, there's not going to be gaping holes against Michigan. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen. It's going to be, it's going to be kind of that type of a game. So, um, you know, um, our guys get better from practice. I also think our guys get better from the, the trade teams that we have. You know, when you can recruit a bunch of really good players and they're not necessarily playing and you're willing to 
rotate guys through or you know have guys take some scout team reps. I think it helps them, but it also really helps your starters. What have you been most impressed with along the defensive line? Um, I, uh, these are really good questions. You guys are making me think. <laughs> I think on the defensive line, I think, you know, just I think we're playing with more extension. We're getting off blocks. We're finishing line movements, um, you know, the, the communication, you know, dealing with, you know, hey, this they're in this set. You know, I think I think all those things have, have gotten significantly better. I think we get off blocks better than, than, than we had earlier. Um, so I think the guys are doing a good job of that in the run game. Um, and, and they play hard. You know, that's, that's one thing about our guys. They, they play really, really hard up front. Rosca getting closer um, to playing more at left tackle, or how, what does that picture look like right now for your yeah, left tackle? Got, we got Ted, Ted Turner's a starter. Teddy has a role. Um, you know, we just keep bringing him along every week. As you know, we, every week we say who gives us the best chance to win. Um, but um, you know, right now that's they're kind of in the roles that they're in, and you know, we'll see how this week goes. But um, um, you know, it's, it's, it, Teddy's healthy. It's just a matter. You know, for a while we're just getting him back. Get his feet wet, uh, you know. But but each week we're just going to play who we think gives us the best chance that week. How much has Lyndon Meyer been kind of an unsung guy, but helped you out on getting some things going? I thought this week it was Lyndon Meyer was the guy. I mean, I think um, you know he's he's really really you know he's a big man. He's really really good in t tight confined spaces of getting his hands and running his feet. So a lot of the runs we ran last week were off tackle runs, right? Like then we ran the the, the 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 Teddy and Lyndon Meyer at the point of attack power, off tackle power. We ran the off tackle toss play, which is you know I never I've never run that play before. That's you know 40 41 pitch. You know that's Coach Ron Brown had to teach me that play, and so he's been fighting for that play forever. So I never seen a guy happier on the sideline in my life because um, that's a, that's a true old Nebraska play, right? And so. Um, but, you know, Luke's making those plays go because of his ability to block at the point of attack. And when you watch Michigan, one of the things they're great at is their, their defensive ends at the point of attack versus tight ends. So, you know, we have a lot of guys that we trust. We'll use a tackle. We'll use some other guys. We have to, we have to play well. But Luke's really done a nice job for us and helped us add a component to our offense. Coach, now that you've gotten two full games with Heinrich as your starter, what's impressed you most when you've gone back and watched these out there? Um, I think, uh, you know, I think Heinrich's done a good job of obviously running the option, run, running the zone reads, running the speed options. You know, a lot of them he's keeping right now. So sometimes I don't know if people know it's the option, but it is. You know, he's just kind of keeping the ball and, and running for big runs. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's done a good job of communication in the huddle. The same problems are still there. We still dropped, you know, we still dropped the snap on the, on the First drive of the third quarter, we scored a touchdown. He's, we still just reached down to, instead of falling on us, reached down to pick it up, and he scampered. So um, we still have a lot of coaching to do, you know. And uh, I can only say that because because Heinrich is such a team guy, he recognizes it. So he's a young player. Uh, he's he's going to make good plays. He's going to make some mistakes. I just like the way he's kind of got the mindset that we preach about what's next. Like whatever happened, come back the next play. You know, it's really great when you have guys who aren't sensitive that you can coach. You don't have to worry about how you say it to them. And Heinrich. Uh, Heinrich, he's that guy. So, you know, we, we can coach him. And I, I thought in the passing game, um, you know, hit, hitting that seam route to Billy in the two minute before the half, I thought he did some things, you know, finding uh, Fedoni on the touchdown. He, thought he did some really good things. There were some other things we left out there that I thought we could have made. So um, we'll just keep accelerating him week after week. Um, and if he's playing, we expect him to play well. Back to the, the drive right before halftime, you, you went into halftime with two timeouts. Uh, left is is that how you wanted that sequence to unfold, or would you have done something differently? No, I, I thought. I mean, I, I know it, it felt weird. I know the crowd was getting antsy. You know, um, um, you know, we at, at the very least, I didn't want to. I did not want to give them the ball back. I didn't want to risk them. You know, coming after a punt. You know, they got a good returner, so I wanted to get the first first down. Um, that play that went to the huddle and took a little bit of time. You know, maybe that was. You know, maybe I would have just gotten. We would have just gotten the ball and run a play, but. I felt like once we got the first first down, the thing would be tilted in our, in our favor, and we had enough timeouts to be able to manage that. Um, yeah, so I mean, um, you know, may, maybe what I've done differently, I don't know. I don't really get that option, you know. But I did feel like you know we got down close enough field goal that we should make. I tr trust Tristan can make that field goal. Tristan's good, you know. I, he, he's going to keep. We're going to keep kicking him till he till he gets comfortable and makes the kicks. And um, but um, you know, I, I thought I. I thought that was managed fine um, for the situation that we're, you know, kind of where we are right now in that game. I wanted to, I wanted to get that first first down, you know, because when you think about it, you know, we talk a lot about that middle eight, the last four minutes of the of the of the of the first half, the first four minutes of the second half. We had the ball coming out of half. We go down if we make that field goal, we we scored on the first drive coming out. That's a ten point swing, and so 
to me, that's how you that's how you win games. You go all the way back to Minnesota. We go down, you know, we, we score score a touchdown. We don't get it right. We end up throwing the pick, so it doesn't work out for us. But then we come out, we score the first drive coming out of the half. So those ten and fourteen point swings to me are how you win games when you're facing good teams. Um, I was glad to see Heinrich operate in that two minutes. I was glad to see him find the seam because. You know, uh, they hadn't played really a lot of cover three, so that we're, we're expecting these other coverages. They come out and cover three, he finds a seam route. So that, w- that was really good reps for him. So, you know, as he continues, I keep telling the guys, as they continue to play well and they continue to show us what they can do, the more you open things up and, and let, the, let the guys go. So that was really good to see him do that. Have you picked, have, have you picked up with Heinrich um, on how people outside of here, you know, in the stadium on Saturday and outside, feel about him, you know, whether it's the style of play, personality, where he's from. I mean, do, do you get the sense of kind of like what's what's happened these last two weeks with him? No, um, I don't. I can't pay attention to that. If I if I ever started to pay attention to that, I would lose the moral high ground with the rest of the players, you know. Um, I remember years ago I was the I was coach of the year at Temple and we're walking down the street and I had some guy I'm like, Coach, we love you. And I remember looking at Bryant saying, is that real? And he said, what? I said, is that real? He said, no. I said, because, I mean, he, he sat in the stadium last year and heard me booed, you know. So, you know, I just – I think it's important for our players to understand, like, it's – it's you know, we love it when people love us. We love it when people support us. But, you know, it, it's it's hard being the starting quarterback. There's going to be a time when, when, when everyone's, you know, upset with you. You know what I mean? Like, so um, the best players play, and I can't ever let it be anything other than that, even the, to sense it, right? Like – um, it's a great story right now, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know. I, I hope I don't see his face on. You know. I, I joked around last week. I don't want to see a hamburger at one of the local restaurants. I don't want to. I want him to play quarterback when he's playing quarterback. And and Jeff now. Jeff. Jeff's seen it both sides too, right? You know. Jeff. Um, I've seen both sides of it. So that's not about the outside world. I'm not saying anybody else. I'm saying about our guys here. Like just 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 focus on today. The guys on our team that aren't playing to the level they're capable of. A lot of them are worried about things other than just like football. Make everything football and things will work out for you. And um, I show them, they, get, they think I'm corny. I show them every Kobe Bryant video possible. I show them every, but like, you know, we all have a craft, master your craft. So I'm sure it's a great story for right now, but if, you know, we'll see how it is on Sunday if he plays. So that's, I just want him focused on football. So how, so how do you think he's dealt with that? How, have you dealt. seen him deal with the, the, the eyes on him? Yeah, I mean, I only see them here, right? Like, you know, I mean, I don't see them outside, you know, um, he's, he seems like he's been great about it, you know, but um, again, um, he, he, you know, we, we talk a lot about what we think the guys should do, but they have to do it, you know, and so seems like it's been great, you know, um, um, but, you know, we, we have to kind of go from there, you know, we have to kind of figure out what it is. I mean, um, I have no, I have no concerns about that with him, though. He seems like a, a pretty humble kid, you know, from what everything I've seen, so. Um, but again, it's all fleeting. It's day by day, man. You gotta, you gotta perform today, and you gotta perform every single day that you're out there. Just, just to be clear, so your approach to quarterbacks this week is how, how, how do you manage that this week? But I, I play the guy I think gives us the best chance to win. So um, it's unique in that I have a guy that was the starter that, you know, couldn't couldn't finish the game really, and then I had another guy that was the starter this past game that couldn't finish the game. So I had two quarterbacks that couldn't finish the game. So for me to sit up here on a Monday and say this is what's happening, I don't. I, I mean, this isn't like gamesmanship. I mean, both guys do the same thing, really. So it's not like it's. I, I just, you know, I, I, my job is to get everybody ready because we, you know, Chubba was going into the game as the number three, and he was down there at the end of the game playing, right? So we get Chubba reps. You know, this, everything we do is reps, 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 um, because um, I don't know who's going to play. I don't know who the hero is going to be this week. I don't know who the hero is going to be next week. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. So we'll just we'll just we know we we just try to split the reps because we get so many reps because we're always doing multiple drills. You know, it's the it's the Nebraska way, and we do it. So that helps us in in you know as comp- as opposed to most teams. I'm sure the answer is all, but is there an order of concern when it comes to Michigan's offense? The thing that you're looking at first to stop, and and the receivers and tight ends that concern you on their team. Uh, they're all excellent players, and uh, uh, you know I think I think you know when you look at you look at a team like. Michigan, I, I think you know you you look at everybody that they have, you know the, the you know the great backs that they have, you know, but uh, quarterback, um, you know, is an excellent player. He he can he can beat you with his feet, you know, just when you think you're going to overload the box, you know, he's going to pull he can pull his own read down, um, you know, he can he can run he can run a quarterback bounce play, uh, he can spin it, you know, so it's an excellent 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 offense well put together with a great offensive line, great tight ends, great backs, so no challenge. 
every single aspect of everything that you do defensively because because they're not afraid to say, hey, we're going to run this ball and get it to the unblocked player. And they ex- they expect the standard for them is, hey, you got to make that guy miss. And if he tackles you once, you got to make him miss the next time. And so that's the way we look at football. And when we've had big plays, it's a play like Heinrich where the guy's unblocked, he makes the miss, and he scores a touchdown. So um, I'd, I'd say I'd say any and all, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. It'll, it'll be a challenge for our guys, a good one. What about, like, what about their quarterback, McCarthy, though? Just what have you seen from him that makes him arguably the best quarterback in the Big Ten right now? Um, well, I mean, I think they have a great passing game. He's got, he's got tremendous protection, so he's got time, and he operates on time. Um, he knows where to go with the football. Like, you know, you play man against him, he goes to the, he goes to the route they think is, you know, that they designed to beat man. Um, he attacks coverages. As I said, he's excellent with his feet, too. So he, he's a dual-threat quarterback that plays as a pro-style quarterback, but when he needs to, he can run. Um, and he's got poise. You know, the game's never too big for him. So, um, you know, I've watched a lot of tape on them. I've watched them last year. I've watched them this year. And I think he's um, – you know, they've beaten two three-and-one teams. Or, you know, they've beaten two teams that are undefeated other than playing them, and they beat them pretty soundly. So he's played against good competition. Um, he's, just, he's just good at everything he does. Does Corum remind you of anyone, like – um, Corm's an excellent player. Um, I don't know who I'd say necessarily. I mean, I think I think he's he's you know he's he's got elite burst, vision, lateral quickness. Um, he's tough to tackle. I think a lot of people make the mistake they try you know you, you try to tackle him low. You're going to bounce off his legs. So um, who that is, you know, I'm not great at those kind of things. I'm sorry, but but um, you know he he possesses a lot of he possesses a lot of traits that make him make make him hard to tackle and hard to defend. You retained a lot of guys at those linebacker spots. What have you seen collectively from that group? Um, well, I mean, I think uh, you know, at, at, at the at the two inside linebacker positions, not counting necessarily the jack. You know, the jacks all kind of do a little something different, and so we're trying to utilize those guys based upon what we're doing. Um, the 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 other guys, you know, Javen kind of comes in on third down a lot to cover, and, and um, you know, they, they play hard. They're physical. They tackle. I think Nick's Nick's got his feet underneath him right now. Um, we've played a lot of those guys because if we get in a situation like this where we're not sure if Luke is ready to go, we have other guys who have a lot of reps. You know, I, I just always feel like there's not, there's nothing worse than asking a guy to go in and play in the fourth quarter when he's been standing there all game. There's nothing worse than asking a guy to go start game six when he hasn't played. So we've played a lot of guys. Um, and when you face a team like this that's physical, that's going to run the ball right at you, um, you know, you better have guys that have, that have, that have, that are ready to go and other guys are ready to, to step in. So, um, yeah, I think, the, I think the linebacker group's played well, and they have to play well again this Sunday, this Saturday. How do, you, uh, how do you build toughness, not just physical toughness, but mental toughness in the course of a season? Throughout the season? Or, yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of that comes to the off season. You know, I, um, I, I believe that uh, – I could talk for hours on this, <laughs> but I believe, that, uh, see, I, believe that, I believe that toughness is a skill. You know, I believe it's a muscle. I don't believe it's something you're innately born with. Um, I don't believe that, you know, I, I believe it's a, it's a skill. And so I think there's a great book by Steve Magnus called Do Hard Things. And um, I think that great coaches and great organizations, you know, just kind of scaffold and just give guys hard things to do that they're capable of doing. Um, the old school, like, make them do things so hard that they quit is not really what it's supposed to be. But, you know, we've tried to be a team that, you know, asks our guys to do things that are just well within their range but that are really hard and teach them to, that there's a positive application for pain and to embrace the things that are hard. And then eventually that mindset starts to flip. The modern day, like, you know, pr- protect your kids from going through hard things is, it's, one of the, uh, it's not good <laughs> in my opinion. So, um, but it's not this caveman approach of, you know, just cuss the guys out and beat them up. It's about keeping everything within their proximal range of like, hey, you can do this. Never ask them something they can't do, but c- consistently stretching their comfort zone. How do you do that within the season? Um, you know, you have to blend sports science with mental toughness and understanding that because of the, the attention that's on what these guys do, that is in and of itself as much, you know, if I can make them all just turn off their, their social media mentions, I would, but I can't. So, you know, um, you know that, that is, is one of the hardest things. You have to build mental toughness so that they can withstand yeah, one day, you know, everyone says something great about you, then you, the next day it's not. And so, um, but I do think it's about our entire offseason approach. It's really, Sam, everything that we do is to build a toughness and a resilience that builds players up, not beats them down. And that's why everyone's, a, the, the, the same the shame to me in society now is people think of coaches always as like, almost like, you know, like, you know, 
people that are on, on the attack, and because there are some that are like that, but great coaches scaffold and build and take, just keep bringing players to a, just a level just beyond what they think they're capable of, and then you look up one day and they're so much better, and they're so much stronger, and they're so much more mentally tough. And so, um, you know, last thing I'll say, and then you probably, probably this is way, probably way too long, but I like the, that question like this. I believe that mental toughness in today's day and age is really also about just being present. You know, the ability to be where you are, the ability to be, the ability to be in the moment. And that's one of the things that I keep challenging our guys. Some of our players aren't playing at the level they're always capable of because they're like a play ahead. Like the play starts and they're already trying to do what they think is going to happen instead of just being in the moment. Like, hey, guys, just catch the snap. Hey, guys, just put your eyes on the receiver. Just do exactly what you're trained to do. And so as teams get good and they, as they get confident, they stop worrying less about everything that's happening around them. They start worrying, being more in the moment. So that's Dr. Haskell. <laughs> that's Corey. That's the, the coaches, and that's also the players, the commitment they make to their, their mental health and mental, mental strength, uh, competitive mindset. Yeah. Uh, Phil, to, how do you balance the necessity for mental toughness but also the necessity for mental health? Well, I think it's the same. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think of mental health as a continuum, right? So on one end, you have uh, elite uh, competitive mindset, and on the other end, you know, probably you would have, and this is, again, this isn't my take, this is, you know, the, the Dr. Perry at the Carolina or Dr. Haskell, you know, true mental illness, and then we're all always somewhere on the, in the continuum, right? So we tell our guys, man, if, if, you're, if you broke your leg, you're going to see the trainer, right? And if, and if you're sore, you go see the recovery guys, right? And if, even when you're feeling great, we still ask you to get in the ice and make sure your body's being taken care of. Well, it's the same thing with your mental health and mental wellness and mental approach, right? When you're really struggling, you know, you see somebody, but when you're kind of going along, we're still working constantly on our mindset and our mental health and our mental approach and the way we see things. And then in our anxiety, a guy like me, like I, I struggle with anxiety. <laughs> I sit there and can't sleep at night. I sit there and, man, what's going to happen? And you, that's just football. Imagine my kids. Imagine my son. You know, I mean, I, so I, I just try to talk openly with our guys about, man, I, I struggle with worrying about what's next and trying to be in the moment. So whether it's taking – two days a week and doing mindfulness with the players to make sure we're, we're building that skill of being present or if it's having these resources. I think all of that is one continuum as, as well as health. And so if these things over here are struggling, it's really hard to deal with this. And then we want to have an organization where we know what's going on with the players. You know, um, you know, it's really hard to be present. It's really hard to be mentally tough when, you know, your mom's sick at home, when, you know, some of your family just, you know, had something happen to you. So, we don't want to be an organization that's football only. And um, so we try to we try to have a welcoming presence where guys know that within our building they can be psychologically safe. They can talk about the things that they have going on. They have resources. They have people that care about them. So um, I think that's our job. I think the football is the fun part. The real job is making sure these guys' lives are okay. And, they're, and again, today in today's day and age, it's not just their, it's their mental health. It's every, the decisions they make. And so we're constantly – constantly working on that mental toughness is not beating players down that's what we that's what people think it's not that it's building them building them you just don't you don't build muscle by not lifting you know what I mean you don't build muscle by saying hey you're strong you build muscle by lifting and so we build I believe we build mental toughness by doing hard things that are in our proximal range and we just get better and better and better and better and I read about it so that I can adequately try to explain it to players and then I let Dr. Haskell and the experts actually really talk about it so thanks guys thank you thank you thank you did this last week.